to find out more about Baba, to get to feel the most experience with Baba is to surrender yourself to Him. Never dub Him. Surrender yourself to Him and let your life be led by Him. Give him. Brother Sairam, Kevin, Sairam. Uh, could you just let us know how you come to know Baba? I got to know Baba from uh, my grandfather's uh, room's uh, photograph. There was a photograph of someone with a bushy hair. Then uh, at that time I was very young. I was still about uh, seven years old. So I started asking my parents, but my parents did not tell me what I said. Lah. Is there any miraculous incidents happen to you that you can uh, tell us? Uh, there are actually many miracles and incidents that happen to him, but I would think I will tell you a, a few uh, which is more significant uh, incidents uh, and, uh, and miracles Good. that happens to me and which is, uh, you all may uh, find out more about it, that, how is it going to guide you in life. Okay, uh, one of them is uh, before I met Baba, before I knew who was Baba and before I went to India, actually I met with an accident on my way back from uh, SP, Sungai Petani. The whole car was my mother's car and it, it, it crashed down the raving, it was a total loss. But I was uh, totally unscratched and I was sitting outside the car. So I was thinking if I was flung out of the car, I'll be injured. But it was like I was uh, you know, like sitting outside the car, maybe carried outside or something like that. And I, I feel there was someone walking beside me when I take a look, it was like a bushy hair man. Uh, but that time it was like uh, maybe... Uh, People say uh, Chinese call uh, Kwadoku, yeah. mm. or whatever, you know, nobody knows, lah. but as long as I was safe. Then uh, the car came and asked me, why am I not there? You know, I'm, I'm still alive. I said, well, I'm alive. Lah. I can get someone to get me out of this place. And so I got the things all done. My parents came and to me. And I started to have dreams with this so-called bushy hair man. And there was a time after the incident, I went directly to India. Mm. I got the first interview. Yeah. The first time I went to put a party, that was in the year 1999. I went to put a party and uh, on the first day, I managed to get the first row and managed to meet Baba, touch his feet and also went into the interview room with Baba. There were a few things that uh, couldn't be explained. Uh. Until today, it cannot be explained when I was in Puta party. Uh, like uh, how he, he manifested things. Uh. And uh, when I was in the interview room, because there was that time I was uh, only me in the interview room with him. And I was given uh, you know, a, something like a, a lecture and advices from Baba about my family members, which I, I didn't even say anything to him. I was very quiet because at the time I was a shock. All I, knew, all I know was uh, I was crying. And I couldn't control the, the tears, like, I was like crying. And he, you know, Baba started to tell me about the, my story, my parents' story, my family members' story, and also he manifested a ring. And uh, the ring is very surprising. When he manifested the ring, I was looking. Because I'm a very curious person, I don't simply believe in things, I'm quite skeptic. But for no reason, uh, in front of me, he was like smiling, smiling, and his uh, you know, normal action was like moving his head and smiling at me and take off his sleeve and slap my face and touch my hand and the ring came out. Mm. I was like, how do you know? Uh? That's the first <laughs> question uh, that I don't really believe. That was the first question. And how do you manage uh, to get the size of my finger? That was the second question. But after being to India a few times already, uh, I realized that there's no answer for that. Uh, because he has been rolling his, his uh, sleeve up, uh, coming up with chain, coming up with <laughs> rings, coming up with uh, diamonds, coming up with watches, pendants, and I've also seen vibhutis coming up. So, and uh, I've seen before, you know, chain that big, you know, that, that uh, the pendant, you know, with the chain is quite big. You cannot even hold with your hand. And Baba's hand is quite small. It's not like our hand so big, you know, Baba's high and Baba's high. How did he manifest it uh, in front of everyone? It's, it, it's, not, it's not like magic. In magic, you have to close your eyes, you know. Uh, actually, when I came back to Penang, only I started thinking, you know. How did he know the size of my finger? And how did he manifest the ring exactly the size of my finger? And when I took it to a gold shop, uh, it was all 99.9 .9 gold. Ah. You can easily bend the ring. Pure gold, pure diamond. Mm -hmm. The second one was uh, I was uh, there for about nearly one week. I wanted to go back 
because you know at that time 1999 that place that was very slum full of mud and uh, I was not used to staying there and that time there was no phone there we have to walk to the there was a, a place for phone phoning uh, use, using the, the what do you call it now? it's the, like the public phone you know. then I wanted to change my ticket so every time I tried to change the ticket it was not successful so one day while I was walking out Ganesh Gate and uh, while I was going to change my ticket in uh, another you know, travel agent, a man, an uncle, stopped me and he said, my son, why are you going back so early? You should stay for another few days. Stay some more. And when I looked back, he disappeared. But I recognized the voice, no? the same voice that was speaking to me in the interview room. And the way he touched me was the same, but different personality. So I couldn't change the ticket again. I went back. Then I tried a few more times to change the ticket. Until I got so fed up that I cannot change the ticket, I went to the picture of Baba. I said, I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to change the ticket. I want you to make me get back. Oh. Then really that, that ticket was, uh, was approved. The ticket was changed. On the day when I went back, I took a taxi. That time was, uh, we had to go to Chennai. You know? We had to go Bangalore, Bangalore to Chennai. The flight was from Chennai. I took a flight from Bangalore and it was a delayed flight. And when the flight reaches Chennai, I saw Singapore Airlines flying off, which was supposed to be my flight. Lah. So I said, gone case. Lah. So I went to the counter, I asked Singapore Airlines, Singapore Airlines said that that was not their problem because the flight was supposed to be India Airlines. So you have to get back to India Airlines to ask India Airlines for compensation for a new ticket for Singapore Airlines. Mm. And that time I only have 50 Ringgit Malaysia left in my wallet. So I told uh, Singapore Airlines, what can I do now? So Singapore Airlines said, you apply from India Airlines and see what India Airlines can do. I went to India Airlines and applied for the compensation of the flight because they were, uh, they were late, they were late. But India Airlines told me that you can only know it the next day. So I took a taxi, I went to just a very lousy hotel, that time a hotel in China, any hotel would do, like, I got only $50, I mean 50 ringgit Malaysia left in my wallet. I called my uh, parents, I called my father, I said, I got only $50 left, what should I do? My father says, okay, never mind, they will try to send money to me. But they do not know how to send it to me because they do not have the address of the hotel. And I don't even know how they can send it to me. That time there was no PayPal, no Western Union. <laughs> so my father was like telling me, okay, never mind, you try to call back in another one hour's time. And they cannot get to my hotel, no, because they don't have the numbers, they, can, they don't, do not know how to contact India at that time, that was 1999. So I got no more no, money in my wallet. I was very worried. And this $50 I have to you know, pay for the next uh, taxi trip or whatever, the next uh, expenses. So, and the hotel fees again. So I stayed there. In the end, I was like very scared. I told Baba Namai. I took out the picture of Baba which I bought. I took the, you know, the joysticks that I bought. And I put the pictures on the, uh, the side table of my bed. And I was like, I said, Baba, okay, Baba, I surrender to you. Okay, you will call me your son. And you think that I'm your son, I mean, okay, I'll be your son. You are my Lord, you're my God, you are my father, whatever you are. I'm asking for forgiving, forgiveness, God, forgiveness from you, you please forgive me. And I surrender to you. You can do whatever you want to me, I'm yours already. And of all the things I saw, that was a very, very uh, unexplainable things until today. Lah, huh? That the joystick came up with a sign you know, from the smoke, a uh, ohm. And after the ohm sign disappeared, the hotel telephone rang and I answered the phone. I thought the hotel, someone must have called me or my father maybe got the number or whatever. Because I told my father the hotel's name. But it was from Singapore Airlines. And Singapore Airlines told me that, Oh, sir, we have already changed your ticket for tomorrow to business class instead of economy class. I was from economy class. One time we will provide the taxi for you also. After everything done, I said, Okay, very good. I'm very happy. Everything is safe already. I started to think myself. How on earth did Singapore Airlines find out which hotel I was in? And why must Singapore Airlines pay for the compensation and give me business class? That was very weird. So I did not bother. Lah. The next day I went to Singapore Airlines, I took business class and I'm back in Penang. I told my parents what happened. My parents were very surprised. Mm. But from what I heard another day, that the other Singapore Airlines had some problem. May have crashed or whatever, I do not know, but some problems. So I was safe from the problem. So in the end, I realized that why Baba did not want me back to get away from that problem. But how did Singapore Airlines find out which hotel I'm staying until today? I still don't understand. I'm already now, you know, it's been uh, 1999 to 
two zero one, two zero two one already. Uh, I still cannot explain why and how Singapore Airlines found out which hotel I was in, and how did they know that uh, I was in the hotel? So from that day onwards, I started following Baba. After this interview, I came back and uh, my life started to change. You know. Baba starting to guide me, and giving me uh, answers, voices, answers to my questions. And uh, for example, like uh, my job, you know, my occupation, you know, I've been changing jobs, changing jobs until one day I came to a job that Baba chooses for me. Because I told Baba that one day I have to take care of my parents, you know, I'm the only son in the family. And uh, my parents are already 80 plus, I have to take care of them. So I need a job that... Uh, stable job. Yes, yes, a stable job that I can have more time with my parents. And uh, I can get money and earn at the same time. So Baba gave me this job, which I don't need to go to the office. And uh, I can be at home, I can still move around, and I can still be with my parents, taking care of my parents, and still earning at the same time. And uh, this job gives me a lot of, uh, you know, like uh, incentive, like trips or whatever. So one day I told Baba that, okay, since uh, now my parents is quite okay, like quite healthy, la, can I, I, I was wondering whether my company will give me a trip, uh, a trip to somewhere I wanted, la, like the India or something, so that I can go there and see the Indian places. I was just putting in my heart only, you know, the trip was not out yet. At the end of the year, I know I even told I even told people that I'm going I, I hope for that trip. In the end of the year when they announced the trip, uh, the trip was exactly the place I wanted to go. So I was like, Baba, are you playing a fool with me? You are showing me another miracle. The answer says, try it lah. If you can get the trip, then it's a miracle. Lah. Baba won't give you the whole thing free of charge. You know, you have to do it and you can work for it also. During MCO, everybody start to think, you don't never go to work, ah, don't chase, ah, no money, I'm, but I'm still earning. And I also managed to get to achieve my, my, my target during MCO. You know? It's like so miraculous. Uh. Like uh, people will start to come and find me, so I go and find them. You know? As Baba says, okay, you are, I prepare for you. First six months, you get it done already. Another six months, you rest and take care of your parents because it's MCO. Oh. And I told Baba something, I said, this year I want to be promoted. But MCO, lah, how to get promoted? Baba says, well, you just do, I will arrange it for you. So I did it, I don't know, of all the things, uh, on the middle of December, that was last month, I was promoted. Oh. To find out more about Baba, to get to feel the most experience with Baba, is to surrender yourself to him. Never doubt him. Surrender yourself to him and let your life be led by him. Give your whole life to him. Uh. He, will, he, will, he will arrange it for you properly. You know. So it's like, uh, because of this training I went through with uh, Baba, I'm starting to calm and calm myself down until today. And I find that it's a very good thing. After calming myself down today, I feel that it's uh, better for me in my life. And I've been accepted more towards the community society, and society. And uh, more people like me. The way that I like people and the way I help people is like, better. Mm. And uh, from, from what that, uh, Baba has guided me and through the answers that he has given me, he says, I always go and help people. You don't expect anything back. You don't worry. Mm. But uh, anyhow, one day you also expect, you know, when you are in problem, people to help you. So if you want God to help you, you just think that you must help the people because inside everybody there is God. You know, after helping people, uh, I feel the true bliss uh, is not by uh, the happiness that we achieve ourselves through our success or whatever. The true bliss is actually from, you know, the happiness that people you, gain from us. Yes. How we make people happy and when they are happy, it's like double happiness. You yes. are happy, you only Correct. want happiness. Correct. But you make everyone happy because of you make them happy, it's like so many happiness. Correct. And that is the true bliss I receive. So I prefer to have this true bliss. Maybe this is the things that Baba has already taught us that made me change you know, into now. And uh, until today, I still have encounters with him. But he's no more here. Mm -hmm. But he's actually, to me, my, my belief is he's everywhere. He's every, no, though that you don't see his form here anymore, but he's everywhere. The way I encounter him now is uh, when every time I, I encounter problems or I encounter doubts or anything that I need questions and answers, I'll just send the question and answer like in my mind, why is it like this? Uh, what should I do? Uh? And obviously, I will receive a voice, uh, exactly like his voice, you know, telling me, why not this? Go try it. And every time I do it, you'll be successful. So I still feel that he's still with us. As long as we have surrendered, you know, he's still with us, no matter where we are. It's like, there's no ending to this. I can tell you a story about what happened recently only about my, with my parents. Yeah, you know. please. My father was, uh, my father is having fixed, he was, uh, he has a minor stroke. And uh, he has not been having fits for quite some time. 
So on that day, I started to cook hot pot, you know, I'm quite a good cook, you know, I cook hot pot and I bought prawns. Something told me that do not let your father take so much prawns. I said once a while, I mind, uh, since uh, <laughs> once a while, it's okay. Uh. So long time already. So I cooked the prawns, he was taking the prawns. Suddenly, there was attacks of fits again. And he was like a hang and sleeping away already, you know, dozing off. And I was very shocked. So I told Baba, Baba, I do not know what to do anymore. And I do not know what's happening. Baba says, put your hand on the head. I put the hand on the head. I said, oh, it's not stroke. As Baba said, it's the attack of fits again. So the answer is correct. So what to do is I have to call the hospital. And I have to get him to the hospital as soon as possible. So I told Baba, please help me get him awake until the ambulance came. Now, how on earth uh, will an 80 plus year old man withstand the fits uh, and for half an hour to one hour? How on earth is that? You know how long it took for the ambulance to come? 45 minutes to get him to the hospital is only one and a half hours. And uh, the ambulance gave us uh, an answer. Oh, we did not manage to find your, your area. So in the end, he managed to get into the hospital. When he reached the hospital, everything was okay or nothing wrong anymore. No more problem. And he has to stay for two days for observation. Uh. So I was like thinking, I asked Baba, why, you, you know, he's okay already, no more problem, why he has to be on observation? He says, no, you stay with him and see. So I stayed the whole night with him. Uh. Mm. And uh, Baba did not want me to sleep. He says, uh, you see and watch him. Today is the day you can watch the whole thing. So I did not sleep. Well, actually, he was okay already, stable already. I did not sleep. I was like uh, watching, watching, looking at him. Then only I realized that in between his sleep, he is not breathing. So I asked the doctor, what is the reason? Why, is, why, why my father sleeps halfway, uh, the breathing was stop on uh, for a nearly uh, at least a one to two minutes then to breathe back. It's quite dangerous and risky. Yeah. You know, maybe Baba wants me to see this, you know. Mm -mm. So I asked the doctor, the doctor says he is having sleep apnea and it's a very high risk for heart patient and stroke patient. Then maybe another attack come. Who is Sai Baba to you? As you know, I've already surrendered to Baba. So Baba is uh, actually, my, to me, uh, it's my heavenly father. The one that owns me, yeah, and also my God. Thank you for sharing your story. Oh, welcome, uh, thank you. We, we thank Baba Kelly, instead. <laughs> and it's very interesting. All right. Thank you very much. Welcome, and thank you. Sairam. Sairam, Sairam.